Hey everyone, welcome back to another F1 2021 video. Part of the My Team Career Mode journey for Cross GT Racing. Before we begin, all the usual stuff, like if you, well leave a like if you enjoy the videos, comment, let me know what you think of the videos so far, what you think going forward, and if there's anything else you want me to play on this channel, please do let me know. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, please do subscribe. I would really appreciate that. And if you are already subscribed, thank you for your support. I do appreciate that a lot. So without further ado, straight in to the facility. So we came off a uh, horrible performance in the United States Grand Prix. Uh, definitely a track that even though, even though I'm pretty sure it says it's an easy track, it's rated as easy, I have so much trouble with it. The racing line I find so hard to stay with. Uh, we we have a lot of pace in the car. The car's got a lot of pace. It can handle reasonably well. We can accelerate out of the corners uh, really quickly. Which seems to be the parts where we make up the most ground on our competitors. But it wasn't enough um, at the uh, at, in Texas. It also didn't help that I was cutting corners and just uh, abusing track limits. We're not abusing them. It wasn't like I was purposely doing it. I'm just not good at the track. I need a lot more practice with it. You know, three seasons in and I still can't get the, hand, the hang of it. But we'll put that behind us. So we ended up P21 there. No points for us. Coulthard, however, did get P8. So there was a few points coming for the team, which we are going to need. As we've got three races left, and we want to maintain third in the constructors, so we can get a whole heap of money at the end of the season. Drivers' standings: we are still in with a shot, but it is it is a long shot. I think it's about 40 points off um, from Bottas, who's leading. He's only four points ahead of Hamilton, so it's uh, pretty close between them. We did have a, a failed upgrade here for uh, the chassis department. It is only one of two that we have left to do. Uh, the other one being a suspension, an ultimate suspension upgrade, uh, which will be for tyre wear, which uh, will help us a little bit if it goes on in time. If I've Actually, I don't even know if I've set it up before this race. Uh, but again, uh, like we have with most of these uh, end-of-season races, we are changing engine components. We're swapping around between uh, a few of them just to try and get the best performance because these tracks I'm not that good at so if I can at least optimize the engine then uh, hopefully that will give us the best chance of some more points we are going to be taking uh, some penalties here uh, for the I think I believe we're at the Brazilian Grand Prix so uh, grid penalties for this race but I quite like this track and even though we haven't had like the greatest results here, like I feel like this is a track that I'm reasonably good at. Uh, we just have a bit of bad luck here. So uh, if we can at least get these uh, components going well, then maybe we can get a good result here and get some more points. Right, so time for qualifying here in Brazil, the Sao Paulo Grand Prix. We do have a little bit of a sensor fault. Um, it's not going to take too much time. Cool. So, didn't really do a whole lot to us. We managed to get onto the track relatively quickly. Uh, the track seems to be evolving quite a bit. So, uh, about partway through, or well, just over halfway through the session, is where we have our best lap as Sonoda is doing his uh, his out lap lets us go quite nicely we don't lose much time there although we would have had a better line if we were coming from the outside of the corner through the inside at the apex properly but that's okay we don't lose much um, track evolution definitely helping us out there um, and we have got our tyres warmed up nicely worn in pretty well we have two laps of fuel remaining so we have a little bit extra fuel on here. This is probably this is one of my first laps out after going back into the pits, just to do some uh, slight tweaks to 
uh, tire pressures. So we go purple through sector two. So we're three tenths up on our previous best. Not as quick through sector three as we were originally, although now we're starting to pick up some time here. We cross the line. And at this point it's good enough for P9. But we end up dropping down to P12. And we should have some penalties, I think, potentially. From those uh, engine components. But uh, Max Verstappen starting on pole. Bottas in second, which is going to help him a lot. Hamilton back in seventh. Not going to have his championship hopes. Uh, but we're just going to focus on getting ourselves some points as we head off to the Grand Prix. Welcome along then to the place where heroes and history are made. It's where the 2008 title was decided in the final corner. And it's the place, a year later, that Jensen Button stormed through from 14th on the grid to claim his one and only Drivers' Championship. It's into Lagos, and it's time for the Brazilian Grand Prix. It's an unusual anti-clockwise race here at Interlagos, where the Sao Paulo locals are packed into the grandstands at each of the 15 corners around this classic 2.7 mile circuit. Two very fast sections bookend the famous and highly technical sector two, where getting a good run out of Jun Sao into one of the two DRS zones will be the key to any overtaking prospects today. Before we begin, let's take a quick look at the grid lineup for today's race. Max Verstappen put in a fantastic lap yesterday, and he starts from pole position. And it's Valtteri Bottas that completes the front row. Considering the rest of the grid, we have Leclerc, Gasly, Carlos Sainz, and Ricardo, Hamilton, Norris, Russell, and Sergio Perez, Stroll, Giovinazzi, David Coulthard and Schwartzman. The captain, they've taken a grid penalty, Joe, Yuki Tsunoda, and Mick Schumacher, Ocon, Lundgaard, Latifi, they'll be starting further back after an earlier grid penalty, and Nikita Mazepin. That's it then, it's time to go racing as we head to trackside for today's race. Only three races left. You still have a chance at the title, but we're going to need some special performances. See what you can do. So, yes, we do just have a chance at the championship, but according to the uh, calculation during that little opening there, I need like 12 billion points to be able to stay in the running, which doesn't quite make sense to me, but that's okay. We're only about 40 points behind Bottas, so if we can get a couple of wins we might be in with a chance as we're off and away here in brazil for the sao paulo grand prix starting off back in p15 after a couple of grid penalties but it also looks like there's a, a few other drivers that were getting grid penalties as well we managed to get around our teammate who has dropped a few positions back in a p16 now stuck behind a couple of aston martins who are battling out already we just stuck up the inside, we got off the track, but luckily because we eased off the power, we uh, managed to dodge any kind of uh, track limit warning, or corner cutting warnings. Soft compound tyres are definitely uh, improving the handling of this car to the point where I'm actually struggling to, um, to manage the oversteer. We are managing to battle our way through as we've made it up to P10 now as we jump ahead of Perez who's actually on mediums running a, a, a different strategy to I would say pretty much everyone else in this race. Almost a little bit of contact there with Joe Venazzi who managed to break just in time. Well, it gives him, gives him some space from us Bottas leading this race now. Getting, must have been getting ahead of a step in early in the lap, I'm assuming. But we managed to finish that lap P10, so we've managed to gain ourselves a few positions there. But now as the uh, field starts to settle down and everyone starts to find their line, overtakes will probably start to become uh, a lot harder to gain as we manage to get up the inside of Giovinazzi there, P9 for us. Now try and duck in behind Hamilton and have him and, and these front runners pull us along. 
So we've got a couple of M McLarens there, and I think there's a Ferrari there as well. Maybe two Ferraris, I'm not sure. So we go purple through sector two. So sector two, just based off that early lap and qualifying, seems to be our strongest part of the track. So we go purple through sector two again on the next lap. So sector two, the windy, uh, the windy sector two area, definitely showcasing how good our car is in terms of taking those corners and accelerating out. As we get a fastest lap. A 1 minute 10.3 which is which is massive because that's also purple through sector 3 I do believe. Well maybe not but that's still massive for us. So we're going to take a look at the inside of Hamilton and we do a little bit of contact there. But luckily no damage to us. We're going to go around the outside now. Just the outside again. So we just sort of squeeze them across the inside. And he manages to, and he, and he ducks in behind, so we managed to get the position. But now with DRS, he's going to take it back. We're side by side now, down the main straight. But we concede the position. It's only early days, we don't need to be fighting too much with these guys. Just duck in behind, get the slipstream, and use the DRS to have Hamilton pull us along. And hopefully we can just maintain um, this sort of pace and keep up with the guys at the front. Give us the best chance at some points at the end of the race. Uh, unfortunately, the uh, pace of the Mercedes is just too much for us. And we end up falling a bit behind a bit. So now we've got a two, we've got a three second gap to Hamilton. In just under two seconds to Perez, who's actually doing a really good job of keeping up with us, considering we're on softs and he's on mediums, although I'm saying that. It's nine laps in, our softs are probably pretty worn out by now, whereas Perez and his medium compound tyres are probably at, uh, at the point where they are now a lot faster than, than the softs. So we're losing quite a lot of ground to Hamilton now. Five and a half seconds and it's only going up. Perez just glides past us with the DRS. Relegates us to P10. But then there's a massive gulf between ourselves and Giovinazzi and Russell as well. Both fighting six seconds back behind us. But then there's, even, there's another gap, probably a few seconds between them and the rest of the back markers. So it's a... Uh, Definitely opening up now on track. We're four seconds by Imperius now and 10, 11 seconds by Sign. So our tyres have definitely seen better days. Coulthard's in the pits now. We will also be looking to go into the pits and change onto. I I'm pretty sure it's hard compound tyres and go through to the end of the race. I think we're doing a one stop this race. I wasn't actually paying attention to the to the decision that I made to my uh, strategy before the race, but uh, the the soft to hard strategy this season has actually worked reasonably well for us. I'm pretty sure the races that I won it we went softs to hards. Um, other than the tracks where I felt like the mediums were actually better suited to those tracks, like Sochi, for example. So lap 14 now, most of the drivers would have come in for their pit stops by now, we're still out, so we're, we've been staying out as the front runners have been going into the pits. And now we've, we've had contact with Bottas, who just came out of the pits onto hards. And a big collision there, so we take another look. Who's at fault here, so it looks like he took that inside line, as we take another look here, he took the inside line and we just cut across too much. There was a tiny autocorrect from him, well not autocorrect, but he did have a little bit of a correction there. You could see his tyres moving, but we we just turned in on him. So that was that was purely our fault right there. I assumed he was going to turn sharper and I was going to come across and squeeze him out. But um, yeah, not, not the way it turned out. And now we've got front wing damage. Luckily we are heading into the pits this lap, but that is definitely gonna, not going to help. Uh, help 
our chances of getting points. We now drop down to P6. We're having trouble getting around these corners. McClure goes flying past us. Ricardo's up next. And he'll be towing along his teammate as well. They're still on soft. Well, Norris is still on soft. So he, I'm assuming he still has to make a pit stop. Unless he started on a different compound, I would say he has to, to make a pit stop. Exit. Exit now. Alright, so now we've got ourselves a new front wing and we're on to hard. So we're going to be running right to the end of the race now with these with these tyres, so 22 laps on these hards which should be uh, no problem at all should easily go the distance but we're now back down to P16 and with most of the cars already heading into the pits for tyre changes and a massive crash there from us we just caught a little bit too much of that so we just caught a little too much of the curbing there. It sent the car into the spin into the one wall and then forced us to slide right across to the other. So the first hit was a little bit of damage to the front wing. The second hit took it off completely. As you can see, all we've got left is the nose. There's no actual end plates or anything else on it. It's literally just the nose. Release, release. So now we're back out onto the track. Lap 16. Strategy. Now, I hadn't even noticed, but we've changed onto medium compound tyres now, which means we're potentially going to have to make one more stop. If we can watch the uh, the tyre wear, we might be able to stretch these to the end. Because another pit stop isn't going to help us at all, as we've just been lapped by Bottas and Gasly. So now we're relegated all the way back to the back of the grid. Mazepin is in front of us. Eight and a half seconds. He's on soft, so I don't know what kind of uh, I don't know what kind of strategy he's running as we have contact with Bottas again. Luckily no front wing damage this time. We do lose the positions we gained over them. As they are now pulling away by the looks of things. We've now caught up to Mazepin. Ideally what we want to do is we want to keep up with Bottas and just have him tow us along. Until we can reach forward we can make a good overtake on them. A little bit of contact there with Mazepin, not enough to cause any damage. But we really need to get past this guy. So we take a look up the inside here, he swings right out across in front of us. We managed to make the move stick up the inside. Blue flags now, so we've now got the rest of the front runners catching up behind us. So we let them pass, and it's just the same story again. Blue flags again with three or four seconds behind Schumacher now. Thanks for that, Jeff. So 26 lap now, and we are almost five seconds behind Schumacher, but we're 32 seconds ahead of Mazepin, so I don't know what sort of strategy he's on. Because we've just been lapped by Hamilton, who's P9. Who we were following at the start of the race and now he's a whole lap in front of us. There's a lap later we finally catch up to Schumacher. But it's going to be a bit of an uphill battle to try and get up near any sort of points in this race. Thanks to the two collisions that we had. Two front wing replacements in this one race. And it has dropped us right to the back of the grid. But you never know, there could be a safety car. We could unlap ourselves on a safety car. We could have front runners drop out, which means that even if we get a, a, a couple of points or a point, we could, you know, the, it could still give us a chance moving forward into the last two races as we have a bit of a run around the outside of Schumacher that we finally get past them. It's only taken us most of a lap. And yet somehow we have some, we get a warning for for collision with them there. I'm not really sure what happened. I don't know if it was maybe a little bit of wheel to wheel as we went past them. But we managed to get past them nonetheless. As Max Verstappen is now out of the session. 
as he comes to a stop just to just past turn one. So engine failure there for him or engine issue of some sort for him. So we now have to slow down again for blue flags. Blue flag. I'm not sure who it is uh, this time. It looks like one of the Alpines. The Alpine of George Russell. Okay, gap ahead is 35.8 seconds. 35.8 seconds ahead. By the looks of things, it's we're almost about we could almost catch up to Mazepin, or we could have. As Valtteri Bottas crosses the line to win here in Brazil, which is only going to help his championship hopes even more. We are still a lap down after what is yet another nightmare day on the track. So we cross the start finish line. And the nightmare continues. It started in the USA and it's carried on here into Brazil. Oh, we need to do better. That's a spectacular victory then, and with it the championship is secure. It's been a magnificent season and they thoroughly deserve the cheers of the crowd here today. Tell me out, how did they manage to achieve this win? I think a large part of the result comes down to temperament. They were able to keep their heads when everyone around them was losing theirs. And that's allowed them to get the best out of the car, to maximise the strategy and to stay out of trouble. And I can see the drivers starting to approach the podium for the victory celebrations. A real team victory today. Everybody played their part. Congratulations then to Mercedes, your race winners today. So a big win today for Bottas here in Brazil, which extends his lead over his teammate Lewis Hamilton in the driver's standings. But the bigger the bigger issue that we have right now is the double podium from Ferrari taking away 13 points this race. No, not 13, what am I talking about? 33 points today. A massive haul of points and not a single point coming to cross GT Racing. Which is massive. Sergio Perez getting the fastest laps. He claims an extra point there for for Red Bull. But there it is. P19 and P17 for Coulthard after, uh, after we started P15 and P13. With two stops. Both finishing a lap down. Let's take a look at the driver's standings now. So we are 18 points ahead of Verstappen. No points for myself. No points for Verstappen after his DNF. Lewis Hamilton now, after finishing P9, is now a full win, a full race win behind Bottas. He's 25 points clear with two races left. Hamilton needs to play out all the stops to, to get ahead of him if he wants to claim his uh, ninth world championship. Bottas looking for his maiden world championship. Can he do it, or is Hamilton going to take it from him by the end? But here's the, here's the main thing that we're that we're worried about ferrari are now only 12 points behind us in p4 they've leapt miles ahead of mclaren they're now 33 points ahead of them but they managed to close the atas i think the gap was originally like 40 something points yeah 45 points was the gap between us and ferrari before this race and now it's only 12 and there's only two races left so we need to pull out some uh, some really big performances here, both myself and Coulthard. If we're looking, if we've got, if we want any hope of maintaining P3 and the constructors, it's a pretty big ask. It's you know we've got we've got uh, Albert Park in Australia coming up, and then we've got the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix to round off the season. Two tracks that again I, I'm not very good at, and I haven't had very good results at. In the last two seasons but maybe this season can be different maybe we can get some good results there finish off the season strong and and bring p3 and the constructors home but we'll have to wait and see if you enjoyed this video please do leave a like let me know in the comments what you thought 
And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, please do subscribe. I would really appreciate that a lot. And hopefully the nightmare can end in the next race and we can get some decent points. Maybe even a race win and uh, really stick it to Ferrari before we head into the last race of the season. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you all in the next one.